Hello. Today's lesson is about the importance of our atmosphere. Uh, the root of the word atmosphere, atmo, means gases. Okay, so this is the sphere of gases that surrounds the earth. And we kind of think about it as, you know, just the, the gases that are around the surface of the earth that allow us to live and breathe, but it goes far beyond the surface of the earth. Okay, there are several layers actually to our atmosphere, and we will learn in this chapter that it is essential for life as we know it. It starts out with a picture of a, a girl and a woman, and she says, if, I didn't, if we didn't have an atmosphere, would it always be cold? Well, yeah. We need our atmosphere to trap in heat. We've all, we've all heard the term, the greenhouse effect, and although that kind of gets a little bit of a bad rap because it's associated with climate change. We need the greenhouse effect or our earth would not support life as we know it. We need some of those warm greenhouse gases to be trapped in um, and heat up the earth. It kind of acts just like a greenhouse. That's where the term came from. The sun comes through and not all of the sun can get back out. It's, it's stuck here and it warms our planet up. Earth's atmosphere is a thin blanket of gases and of tiny particles and all of that together, all of those different gases and particles together are collectively called air. Um, we notice air the most when it's windy and what we'll learn in meteorology is that wind is just the movement of air and that's caused by differences in pressure and in temperature. If you think of things that you already know, you know that warm air rises and cold air sinks. Well, when you've got air masses of different temperature and they come into contact, one's going to rise and one's going to sink. That movement creates wind. The bigger the difference, the stronger the wind. Um, Earth's atmosphere, along with the abundant liquid water at Earth's surface, are the keys to our planet's unique place in the solar system. That's what makes life as we know it exist here on Earth. Um, <clears throat> we are very, very lucky that we have an atmosphere. Not all planets do, as we have learned. If we did not, our Earth would be very similar to some of the other terrestrial planets, right? Um, Mars has a very thin atmosphere, but it is not conducive to life as we know it. And we, you know, with without our atmosphere that we currently have, we would be um, very, very similar to the conditions on Mars. If we look at this figure right here, it has the composition of our atmosphere. It's kind of hard to see here. You'd have to zoom in, but... Um, the bulk of the gas in our atmosphere is actually nitrogen. A lot of people think that it's oxygen, and that's true for the lower layer of the atmosphere where we live, right? That's very oxygen rich. But again, our atmosphere goes far beyond the clouds up into space. So our most abundant gas is, is nitrogen. And then we've got like 20... 223% is going to be, or 22% is going to be oxygen, and then there's just a little squeak more that is a few other gases. Okay, and then they can show that um, of these little gases right here, if we break that down further, the bulk of that tiny sliver is CO2. CO2 is a greenhouse gas, that's a gas that traps, absorbs, and traps heat in our atmosphere. Okay. So again, our most abundant gas is nitrogen, second is oxygen, and then the third is going to be CO2. Without our atmosphere, our Earth would look a lot more like the moon or like Mercury um, for many reasons. One, uh, our atmosphere definitely protects us from meteors and asteroids hitting us. Um, it's again, helps, um, helps moderate our temperatures so that we don't have these extreme colds or extreme heat, it's like, um, like on Mercury. When Mercury's facing the sun, it's really, 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 really hot. When it's facing away from the sun, it's really, really cold. And that is because Mercury does not have any kind of an atmosphere to regulate that. 
Uh, without our atmosphere, we would not have these two processes, photosynthesis and respiration. Photosynthesis, as you learned um, in seventh grade, is taking in CO2, which animals breathe out, right? Plants take that in along with water and sun, and then they can convert it to a sugar, which is basically the food for the, for the plant, and then they breathe out oxygen. We can flip that whole equation around and we get respiration, which is what we do. We take in food or sugars, we breathe in oxygen, and we, as a result of that, give off CO2, water, and usable energy. Okay, so these two things work kind of in concert with each other. They're kind of the opposite of each other. And these things, again, would not be possible if we did not have our atmosphere. Um, our atmosphere is a crucial part of the water cycle. Uh, it spends, water spends a lot of time in the atmosphere, mostly as water vapor. Water vapor, again, is another greenhouse gas that traps and holds on to heat. Um, our atmosphere is a very, very important reservoir for water. Okay, so as all that moisture in the air, as that as water on earth evaporates and enters into the atmosphere that can cool and condense and fall back down to the earth as rain and so it is a very essential part of the whole cycle also in our atmosphere there are layers of other gases that are essential to life on earth one of them being ozone you've all heard of the ozone layer ozone the chemical equation for ozone is o3 and that absorbs really high energy ultraviolet radiation coming from the sun. Another essential thing for life, right? We need to be able to have our own natural sunscreen to protect not only us, but other living things on Earth from that really, really high energy UV radiation. Okay, so the ozone layer, which is just another gaseous layer in our atmosphere, happens in a portion of our atmosphere called the stratosphere. I'm going to pause this for a second because my phone is ringing. Okay, I'm back now. Um, oh, now somebody's coming in my door. <laughs> I'm back. I just switched rooms altogether. I came to Mr. McCormick's room because it's nice and quiet in here. Okay, where was I? We were talking about the ozone um, being a layer in the stratosphere that protects us from the high energy UV radiation. Very, very important and very, very unique for our planet. And then um, I kind of touched on this before, but another really important feature of our atmosphere is temperature moderation. Again, we need those greenhouse gases. Even though they get kind of a bad rap, um, they are naturally occurring. Many of the greenhouse gases in our atmosphere are naturally occurring, and we need those in order to keep our climate kind of in check um, and keep things warm enough for life as we know it to exist. Problem is, we add greenhouse gases through any kind of combustion reaction with um, fossil fuels. And so when we add greenhouse gases, it intensifies this effect. And that's, um, that's something that we are trying to take care of. But this in and of itself, uh, the greenhouse effect in and of itself naturally occurring is actually essential to life on Earth. Another thing that makes things important um, is that our atmosphere provides a substance for waves to travel through. If you've noticed in some of, some of our um, videos that we watched about space, astronauts can't just talk to each other when they're on another planet. Um, they, we need to have that, that dense, um, we need to be surrounded by dense air in order for waves to be able to bounce off that and actually make sound. So it's silent up on the moon if we went up to the moon and um, started playing the drums or something you wouldn't hear anything it says here the atmosphere is made of gases that take up space and transmit energy sound waves are among the types of energy that travel through the atmosphere without an atmosphere we could not hear a single sound earth would be as silent as outer space um, so when you see big explosions and fire and noise in space that is all fake all right, so in summary, our atmosphere is made of gases. Most abundant gas is nitrogen, second, oxygen, third, carbon dioxide. It's a crucial part of the water cycle. It's a vast reservoir for uh, water vapor. 
and um, that will eventually return to the earth as precipitation and it moderates our temperature and gives rise to life as we know it. All right, we got a little video here at the end of this chapter. Um, it's a what if video. What if Earth suddenly lost its atmosphere? What would happen? And then here are five questions. We are not going to write these questions down. We are simply going to discuss them. So if you are a distance learner, uh, after you're done watching this lecture, go ahead and watch the video. I will link it right to the classroom and take a look at these five questions and see if you can answer them. All right, we'll talk soon.